morning, everybody, and welcome to our presentation on Access to Capital with Rob West. And first, just a little bit about us at SCORE. We are a nonprofit organization that is part of the Small Business Administration. SCORE provides small businesses with free, confidential business mentoring, both in person and online. And we provide educational services such as this webinar. We have 90 volunteers in our SCORE Minnesota division, and our organization was recognized as Chapter of the Year in 2022. We have a brand new website for you to find us on, which is score.org backslash Minnesota, where you could request a mentor or sign up for a webinar such as this, such as this. <laughs> Um, Rob is from TD Bank this morning, and he is one of our community sponsors. And I will get started with Rob this morning, uh, who is the Community Development Manager for TD Bank in Central and North Florida. So take it away, Rob. So I've been waiting for the past five minutes to say good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So everyone, <laughs> so everyone, welcome so, to the presentation. And can you see my screen okay? It says has started sharing screen, but it's blank. But it's still blank. Oh gosh, because I still see these uh, two buttons I'm not super familiar with. I apologize. And then, huh, it still just keeps telling me. Well, if you like, you know, want me to try giving it a shot? Sure. <laughs> Sure, since I seem to have messed this up. Okay. <laughs> You're my backup. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep, we can see the screen now. Okay. Okay, very good, very good. Let me get myself together. I hate that the toolbar is right where I want to go. Right, should be any moment. Okay, everyone, how's that look? Looks good. Okay. Looks good for All my right. view. All right, let's roll. All right, <laughs> sounds good. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rob West. I work for TD Bank. My role at the bank is community development, which means I work with a lot of communities, especially low to moderate income communities. And I wanna make sure that they have access to capital, access to banking, and I wanna make sure that we're very inclusive that we're including everybody, especially um, low to mid income areas, urban areas and rural areas. So Kevin is my partner and he's a local contact. I love having our folks on who are locally. He's in Sarasota. So if Kevin, if you share with who you are and what you do. Sure, my name's Kevin Hughes. I've been with TD Bank now 11 years. I'm what they call a store manager uh, versus like a branch manager, like we used to call them years ago. But a store manager is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of my location here in Sarasota. So I do everything from managing the team to small business development, to work with groups and charities. We work with nonprofits, fundraising for groups and things like that. So I'm your local contact on the ground here out in the Sarasota Bradenton area right now. And I'm always here, simple phone call. I'm available almost every day of the week. So I'm here to help Rob and, and help our, our bank get the word out there that TD Bank is here to help you if you're a small business, if you're a charity, if you're a nonprofit, we have many different things we can do to help you. And we're just a phone call away. All right, awesome. Thank you, Kevin. So we're gonna roll right into this. You know, I, I did spend about 16 years as a store manager. And very often folks would come in and say, hey, Rob, I wanna get a small business loan. Same thing for Kevin. I wanna get a small business loan. So we're gonna talk about 
the different options when it comes to financing your business. We also want to get that loan approved. Um, you know, sometimes we have to say yes, sometimes it's no, sometimes it's maybe. A lot of times our maybes are go to SCORE, they can mentor you. Go to this business consultant, they can help you so you can come back to us and, and you're ready. So we love working with SCORE. SCORE is one of my favorite peoples. All right. So how much business does your cap, how much capital does your business need? These are a few questions that we get. I get this all the time when I was a store manager and even now when I'm out in the field talking to entrepreneurs, they come up to me and they say, hey, Rob, I need a line of credit for 25,000. Kevin, I need a line of credit for 50,000. I need a line of credit for 100,000. The next question is, why do you need it? What is the purpose? And sometimes we get, well, my uncle told me, my friend told me, my other friend who's at SCORE told me this is the amount I need. So we need to find out how much do you need? What's the business, pur what's the business purpose? How will you pay it back? Do you have the opportunity to pay it back or the capacity to pay it back? How will it be used? How will this impact your bottom line? And this is a one-time thing, a one-time loan or line, or will it need to be increased or will it need more capital later on? So really we wanna help you as uh, find out what do you really need? And I'll give you an example. I had a client, he said, hey, Rob, I need a line of credit for 100,000. So it turned out he had spent 50,000 of his own money and I asked him, what do you need 100,000 for? He goes, I need 100,000 for capital, capital expenses. He had $50,000 of personal debt. So it turned out the best option for him was to take the $50,000 of personal debt, refi that into a term, and then do 50,000 as a line of credit. So Kevin is one of the best people you can talk to uh, when you sit down and talk for a loan. And these are a couple of examples and a couple of options. We'll look at Carl. He comes in, he comes and sees Kevin or maybe me and said, hey, I need a thousand dollars. There's a monthly expense. I need a loan for a thousand dollars. Well, guess what? We don't do a loan for a thousand dollars. Many banks, that's too low. So the best option for Carl, since he's using this expense, maybe it's a monthly expense, a thousand dollars. The best option for him is a business credit card. And we look at um, Priya, she has a growing salon and her situation is she needs stock, she needs inventory. So every quarter she needs more shampoo, more hair products. So she'll say, hey, my expenses monthly, $10,000. So a good option for her could be a line of credit. And I'll tell you an example of another client who I had, he spent about $50,000 on materials that he was selling. By getting a line of credit, he was able to buy more material in bulk, which lowered the margin of the cost, which increased his profit margin. So by buying in bulk, he was able to save money, sell at a higher cost and make money. So that's a great use of a line of credit. Something that's gonna occur periodically. And Doe, he needs, he has a five-year contract. It's a one-time expense for $50,000. So the good option for him is a term loan. A term loan is gonna allow him to buy equipment. A lot of times we'll have clients will come in and say, hey, I need a $50,000 line of credit. You know, a line of credit is revolving. So to give Dow a line of credit wouldn't serve his purpose. By having a term loan, it's a term maybe five, seven, 10 years. He knows what his monthly payment is going to be and he could budget that. So a good, so a good option for him is a term loan. Natasha, she's washing dogs. She's gonna open up a second location. Things are going great in Sarasota. Now she wants to be in Bradenton. She's growing her business. So she might need a CRIM, which is a commercial real estate loan to buy at a storefront at a new, new office or new location. So for her, that'd be a one-time expense. So she's gonna use $250,000. You want to want a line, you'd want a term loan. And by having a term loan, which is a CRIM, her storefront is also the collateral. 
So I'll pause, Kevin. Um, anything you want to add? Anything you see that walks into your office? Yep, yep. That's definitely on spot. You mean we do get a lot of people that just say, I need a $50,000 line of credit. And then once I dig in to find out what they really need that for, we do end up breaking it up sometimes into a loan or a line. I kind of tell customers, think about it. Would you go out to buy a new car and throw it on your credit card? No, you wouldn't do that. Number one, the rate could change on you. And number two, it's not best suited on a credit card. It would be better suited on a term loan. So we do a lot of that. We'll do a term loan for your immediate use and a line of credit for your revolving use. The line of credit is almost like a super big credit card that you're going to borrow those funds, pay them off, borrow the funds again, pay them off. It's an open-ended line that you can use, pay it down to zero and use again. My usual uh, line of thought is if you can pay it off within a year, it likely should be on a line of credit. If it's gonna take you longer than a year to pay it off, that should really be a term loan. But again, you and I would have that conversation when you come in, when we talk on the phone, we would determine the best product. You just have to be ready with what do I need the money for? How much do I need? And then the basic business information. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for your input. You know, there are different options. Banks aren't the only lenders. When you look at this graphic, it shows you from left to right, the lending options. It could be an alternative lender. Uh, these are typically non-banks and it could be an angel investor, but an angel investor, uh, if you've watched Shark Tank, which I'll tell you, I hate watching Shark Tank because I'm like, those are not, those are bad deals. Don't do it. Those are bad deals. But an angel investor like someone on Shark Tank, they're taking all the risk or most of the risks. So they want um, share. They want share of your ownership of your company. So should you fail, they don't have they don't have to put anything into the game. They don't they're not putting any skin to the game. So angel investor, alternative lender may do your loan, but they're going to charge you a higher interest rate or want equity. I work with CDFIs. For those who don't know what a CDFI is, a CDFI is a community development financial institution. They do not take deposits. They are chartered by the government and they mostly lend to minority areas and rural areas. So typically folks who have a hard time getting lending from a bank, they may be able to get, they may be able to get through a CDFI who are chartered. And they also receive funds from banks and other nonprofits as uh, contributions. They will charge you higher than a bank, an interest rate higher than a bank, but lower than an angel investor or alternative lender. And they may have a longer term. And typically CDFIs will say, if you get this loan with us, you have to go through this one year program of technical assistance. And typically that includes everything from accounting, HR, IT, everything to keep you stable. Because something that something that you know we see as bankers, um, most of it, many businesses fail. So CFI, they want to give you technical support that will help you in your journey so that you don't fail, and that this money is put to good use, which stems the economy and helps the environment and our and our communities. Um, SBA guaranteed loans. These are loans given out by banks. Sometimes that's a misnomer. Misnomer. Some folks think the SBA gives money out. No, banks give the money out. Banks like SBA loans because SBA said we may guarantee a portion of it. So should, should that note fail, that bank loan, that um, SBA fail, the bank is only on the hook for 50% of that or a smaller portion. So it encourages banks to lend. And I will just say as a, as a caveat, TD Bank is the number one SBA lender on the East Coast. So our brand, we go from Maine to Florida. We have a big presence in Central Florida, and we have two more stores coming in the uh, um, Sarasota market. So just like um, you know, any bank, any loan that's in addition to a bank, it's going to be a little higher interest rate, but there also may be some fees that you don't have to pay. And if anything that's government related, there will be a lot of paperwork. So come prepared and prepared with a lot of paperwork, but also prepare for a lot of time. It may take 
30 to 60 days to get an SBA loan. Uh, conventional, which is we consider a normal bank loan, um, that's probably going to have a, a decent interest rate. You know, we are in an interest rate environment where interest rates are um, going up, but they are still favorable. Borrowing from yourself, uh, Kevin, I see this a lot. As I mentioned in an example that I talked to you about, the person who had a lot of personal debt, we've seen entrepreneurs use their 401k, um, home equity, their savings to self-start their business. Also, we've seen um, crowdsourcing. So crowdsourcing is, a, is an opportunity. Um, be wary of that because sometimes they may want a portion. If you're borrowing from family, make sure it's written down because we've seen where companies have blown up and gotten very big. All of a sudden the uncle, the aunt, or the grandpa said, hey, I give you this money. I think you should pay me back some interest. You're doing well. I took a shot with you. So make sure it's all in writing. And then lastly, on the far right, we'll see grants. Um, we've seen a uptick of this during COVID, whether it's CARES Act money, municipalities, um, city, state, local governments have given grants. So make sure when you do get a grant, if you, if you are offered a grant, see what strings are attached to that. Typically, it's some kind of financial reporting to make sure that you're stable and that you're meeting some kind of correct criteria. So things to think about from left to right, alternative lenders are gonna have a high cost, all the way to grants will be low cost or no cost. So things to consider, what's the principal? What's the interest rate? Do I have the option to pay off my note early? Are the closing costs? Is it annual fee? So make sure that you find out what the disclosures are and what the uh, actual end cost is going to be. So I'll pause for a second. Any, any comments, any questions? I'm not looking at the um, chat. As you were getting started, I was thinking of one of my uh, one question that one of my score clients had, and there they had a small business started, but they wanted to know what exactly it was that they needed when they went to the bank. Um, you know, so I was like, their business name, their EIN, um, you know, social security number, things like that. But didn't know if that would be a question of something that you'd be covering along the way, or could give us a small checklist as we get going. Um, you know, what? I'll give you a small checklist now. Sounds good. <laughs> and Kevin, you can chime in since you're doing this every day. Mm -hmm. We've seen businesses who have come in and they're not actually a business. So one, do not commingle your personal funds. Set up a business account in the entity of your business. So you can go to uh, SunBiz, get registered, um, go to irs.gov, get an EIN number. You do that first. So you go to EIN, get your EIN number. Then go to SunBiz, register your business. And I'll also say get an accountant. We see a lot of folks struggle with an accountant. So get an accountant and a banker. So Kevin, I'll let you add. Yep, yep. One of the first things we'll ask you is what status is your business? So are you a sole proprietor? Are you an LLC? Are you a corporation? Uh, of course, if you're a sole proprietor, you could be using your tax ID number or your social security number. So as long as you have that information when you apply, we'll need that. If you are an LLC or you are a corporation, we'll need copies of your corporate docs. Uh, in addition to, we'll need to know who owns your business. Is it just you, Rob? You're, a, you're the only owner, 100%. Is it you and Leola own it 50-50? So we'll ask you that when we're applying We'll need to actually know anybody that's usually 10% or more owner of the business will need to know at the time of application. Those people will be involved in signing on the loan docs. Again, if you're borrowing under the business, everybody involved with the business usually has to sign as well. And some of them will have to be guarantors as well. And that's Great. about it. I mean, we'll, we'll walk you through the application 
we're real good in the stores as to what we need you to bring. We'll give you a, a list before you come. Um, we'd like to have everything in one sitting so we can actually take the application, get it all done. But if not, you can always get back to us and scan and email us the missing docs. The main thing is to get that application started. Let's start collecting information, get everything on paper, and then go from there. We can also do online applications as well. We have a, a very simple electronic application that again, we can send to a prospect and they can complete it and send it back to us that way. So there are multiple different ways you can apply for, for the loan. Okay. We do have uh, two other questions right now over in the chat box, if either one of those uh, would be appropriate to cover now. The first one is, will you cover the ROBS program at all today, R-O-B-S? Oh, Rob, uh, Rob West, you're still on mute. I don't know what the ROBS program is. I don't know if they mean me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did see the other question. It, it talked about rates. Um, I don't think it's appropriate for us to discuss rates and terms. So if Kevin, if you could put your email address in the chat box and reach out to him, because we really want this conversation to be more educational, but meet with Kevin and he get more personal and more technical and more uh, bankerish. But you know, some typical things we do want folks to also know when you come into the uh, bank to get a loan, um, be ready for your W-2s. We'll ask for two years personal W-2s. If you've been in business for two years or more, we'll ask for two years of business W-2s. Uh, we have a form which you'll have to fill out which will have your assets liability, um, a personal financial statement, um, a business plan, Business plans are always good to have, especially if you're under two years. And we'll also wanna know what your gross annual revenues. So those are some of the main factors. Mm -hmm. But as I said, uh, you can come in and talk to Kevin, he can give you more detail, but also um, find a CPA or an accountant. And I'll tell you uh, during COVID, there was PPP, you know, the personal protection, protection program, program, which assisted folks with payroll. Most of the folks who were turned down didn't have good records, they didn't have records of their HR, their payroll, or their finances. So they did not get that money. So think about that. So not only you need your financials and reports for loans, but also for things such as I said, grants and PPP. So also check with your, okay, go ahead, Kevin. No, I was going to say, Tiffany mentioned the, the Rob's thing. Uh, it says utilizing retirement funds to fund a portion of your business is what she was referring to. Okay. I'm not aware of that program. I just know a lot of folks may use other means as a, as a self-start their business. Yep. That's something that maybe we can look into and get back to you, Tiffany. If you send me an email, I'll look into that for you. Okay. And, you know, a good way, good reason also to have a CPA is there may be tax benefits. They may help you with your business entity structure. Um, how do you track your business flow? Um, most banks have some kind of online accounting system that you could upload that will help you um, establish a business image. You know, being able to go into a bank and apply for a loan and have your account records. Maybe it's invoices, something with your business name. It kind of shows who you are. I would also ask folks to think about your online image. Um, often when folks come into uh, the bank, they want to become members of our bank. We may Google their name, just see what, what pops up. We may Google their business website to see what they actually do. We also do site biz. We may want to come by. So remember to uh, protect your image, not only in person, but also virtually. Okay. Um, also things to think out, think about, you know, we're talking about capital, but there are also other business accessories you may need. It might be merchant services. How do you capture payments? Do you need a physical bank? Do you need to do remote deposit capture? Do you need to have someone you can call 24 hours a day? So think about that as you, uh, borrow your business and start your business. So as I mentioned, you know, 
we've seen a lot of self-starters. They've used personal credit cards, their retirement, they've taken out personal loans. Um, the pros is, it's, it's pretty, pretty much already available. Usually as you've already paid the tax on it, it's your money, your control. The cons, it might be connected to a family member or partner. How do you separate those two? If someone helped you with the startup, are they an investor? Are they a founder? Do they have shares in your business? And really, uh, we see this a lot. Sometimes folks commingle personal and business funds. So make sure you keep those separate. As I mentioned, sometimes we borrow from our friends and family. Be clear on the terms. Be sure what the expectations are. Ask, is this a gift? Is this for Christmas? <laughs> or is it a loan? Or I need to pay you back in, in 20 years? Okay, put all agreements in writing. As I mentioned, have a banker, a CPA, also attorney. Those are your big three. Uh, typically, bankers are free. Just, just let you guys know that. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, CDFI, they're one. They are dedicated to putting money on the streets, especially helping disadvantaged communities. We see them mostly in urban areas and rural areas. So they often take on more risk. So they may ask for more paperwork, more scrutiny. And as I mentioned, probably uh, six, maybe in 12 months of training, technical assistance. I really love SBA loans. Sometimes SBAs have very little down, maybe as little as 10%, depending on what type of loan you're getting. We'll ask for a little as 10%, just so you can put a little bit of skin into the game. Uh, typically, there are no annual fees to wait for seven years, and typically the term is seven years. So the best place to start is, is with your bank. And uh, I've had entrepreneurs come to me and say, hey, I want a small business loan. I want an SBA loan. An SBA loan is typically a loan that's offered after the original loan was countered. So we just don't go off and say, hey, you know, we have this SBA loan, come get this SBA loan. Typically you apply for a traditional loan from a conventional bank, conventional bank loan. Sometimes it's countered. So we may see there's a risk, but maybe we like the industry. We'll say, we will back this, but we'll back this, we'll back this as an SBA product. So a lot of times this comes off as a counter. So I mentioned before, we are SBA preferred lender and many of your traditional banks are. So I'll pause for a second. If there are any comments, questions, anything you want to add, Kevin? Uh, one thing yeah. I did see in there that a, a participant, I believe Jennifer was asking, and I think it pertained to when she was just opening a bank account. She wanted to know if all the shareholders or all the owners of that company needed to be there to just open a bank account. I can answer that one. No, they do not have to be here, uh, only if they're going to be a signer on the account. So for example, if you, me, and Rob own a business, uh, I'm a silent partner, maybe I own 20% or so, uh, you and Rob are going to run the account, you're going to handle it. You and Rob would need to be either at a TD location or near a TD location. Rob can be up in New Jersey. Leola, you can be down here in Florida. We will do that in conjunction with another location up there. Uh, so not all the business owners have to be signers unless you want them to be. Um, we would need though at account opening, similar to the loan, we would need to know the ownership of the business. So again, if Kevin's 25% owner, I don't have to be a signer, but I need to know that at account opening, there's a form called a beneficial ownership form. So we would say Rob owns 35, Leola owns 35 and say Kevin owns 30. Kevin doesn't have to be a signer, but we need to disclose that at the time we open a checking or a savings account. So the answer is no, they don't have to be here. They don't even have to be signers unless they want to be. And if they do, and if they're in two different locations, we usually do very well coordinating, coordinating especially between New York and Florida, New Jersey and Florida. Um, we have a person sign the form up there and the other one sign the forms down here in Florida. So. 
hopefully that answers the question. Excellent, thank you. And if anybody does have a question, please feel free to type that into the chat box um, where Kevin and Rob can hopefully get those answered for you live. And then somebody, right, was, awesome. somebody was asking, could they get a copy of the presentation slides? Are those available? Yes, after today's presentation, I will be emailing you a copy of all the slides and the uh, presentation as well. All right, very good, very good. So we have numerous borrowing options. I always tell everyone, go to your bank. They know you best. You've been a client of theirs. They may have a lot of options. Typically, banks have a large range. It could be a small business credit card all the way to a CRIM, as I mentioned before. Um, so on the cons here, it says an application to closing can take about two weeks or more. <laughs> so I'll, I'll lean on the more. I'll tell you my best case scenario, I closed a loan in five days. I think I've done it twice, but typically it, it could be anywhere from 30 to 60 days. And there's a lot of factors that come into play with that. A lot of times it's, sometimes the clients don't bring all the paperwork. Maybe someone's out of town, maybe a partner's on vacation. Um, if it's an SBA and it's during tax time, that will slow things down. So there's numerous factors that could come into play. But uh, be, be ready because sometimes we have clients who come in, they want to apply for a loan and think they'll get approved the next day and the funds the next day. So just be realistic about, about the time. I mean, a, a lot depends too on how prepared you are. You mean, I've recently did one in two weeks, which I thought was really, really good. Um, I've seen them go 30 days, 60 days at the most. But again, it depends on how prepared you come in. Do you have your tax returns with you? Do you have your tax ID number? Do you have the ownership of the business? Who owns what percent? The more you can help us in the beginning with the application, the faster that'll move along. In turn, usually will be your contact in, in the location here. If we reach out to you for a document and you faster you can get it to us, the faster we'll get it to the underwriter and the faster we'll move through the process. So. All right, perfect. You know, traditionally banks offer lower rates and have lower fees. Um, and also mentioned the application process. We started doing this during COVID and we've seen a lot of success. You can actually apply online. So the initial process could be generated online. And a fun fact, we found that most of those applications were done after 10 p.m., which makes sense. All the entrepreneurs are working all day. But even though you apply online, you will have to bring in documentation into the to the store. Um, you may have to bring your checking account or deposits to be able to get a loan at a bank. Uh, part of the banks know your customer. The federal government, uh, part of the uh, Patriot Act, we have to know who our clients are and who are we serving and what they do. So a lot of times that starts with having um, a checking account or something on deposits. Also be prepared to talk about your business, talk about your growth plan, and also plan for the funds. As Kevin said, a lot of times we'll sit down with a client and find out they don't need 100,000, they need 25,000. Or they don't need 25,000, they need 75,000. So we can really help with that. And uh, typically banks are easy to contact, whether it's online, on the phone, through email, text, uh, we're re really available. You know, we'll also take a look at your credit history. A lot of people don't think about that. They think of me being a business, credit's gonna be based off, off the business. We will take a look at you because you're the guarantor. You know, what happens if the bank goes out of business and you have a loan? You still owe the bank that money. So we're gonna look into your business credit and see how responsible you've been. As I mentioned, CDFIs may give uh, funds, but uh, they also may give off grants. The city of Sarasota may give a grant. Uh, Manatee County may give a grant based on your business. So typically there's a lot of criteria. There may, may even be some kind of criteria. I've seen some municipalities and some nonprofits do a shark tank business pitch. Whoever has the best business pitch wins 10,000, 5,000, or free account services for a year. 
So a lot of times we'll see that, but also make sure, you know, what is the criteria and what is, what am I getting into? Um, we've also seen sometimes if money is given to you as a grant, they may want, they may distribute it quarterly. So instead of us giving you this $5,000 grant, we may give you a thousand this quarter, a thousand second quarter and break it up. And sometimes nonprofits that do give out grants, they may want to have some kind of reporting. They may wanna see your financials quarterly or have a, a business statement at the end of the year. So consider that. You know, as I mentioned before, you know, credit score is very important as a small business owner. I will also share it's important for those who have ownership in your company. I've had clients who have sat down, um, owner one, owner two, they sit down, they apply for credit, you have to tell owner two, you have bad credit, you can't get the loan. That's awkward. Sometimes we even seen it as spouses, not only business partners, but also spouses. So if you are on the business entity, uh, your credit is important too. So typically when we look at credit, we'll look at how well you use your credit for the past two years and also what type of loans you've had for two years. Typically a good rule of thumb is to have at least two lines of credit for two years. So line of credit could be a house note, a car note, having a credit card. So looking at that for two years, they'll kind of show us a little bit of your character if you'll pay back that note. It's kind of saying, hey, how you paid your debt in the past is how you'll pay us in the future. So I'll pause for a second. Anything you want to add, Kevin? Anything in the chat? Nope, we're caught up in the chat. You I mean, I just uh, replied back. In other words, they asked if you can upload the documents online, and yes, you can. You can also email them to us at the store, and we will pass them on to the, to the underwriter. So ideally, yes, you could do a good portion of this online. Uh, I know I've took, taken a recent application, got it approved, and didn't actually even meet the customer until we sat down at closing. So depending on how you like to work, what's comfortable for you, as long as we can get the information we need, get it to the underwriters and the processors, uh, we might not even meet until closing. You know, it's up to you. I did see one question on there about uh, Dun & Bradstreet or a D&B number. Um, the uh, gentleman named Kevin was asking, it said, I keep getting asked to pay Dun & Bradstreet to know my business credit score. Is there any value in a business credit score? It sounds like you review the personal credit scores of anybody that's the owner of 10% or more. Do you have any thoughts on that, Kevin? You mean we don't usually get involved a lot? You mean I guess if you wanted to know where your your business sits as far as a credit score goes, you could uh, apply through Dun and Bradstreet and get a credit score. I mean we would never ask for it or require it. We do our due, due diligence through our our underwriters and our processors. That would be more if you wanted to see exactly what what you look like from a credit standpoint for your business. Uh, but again, we would never pull a D and B here at the branch or anything like that. Years ago, many years ago, yes. Not so much, not so much now. Yeah. And also uh, in my experience, um, typically if it's a small business loan, we call them micro loans under a hundred thousand, I think 150,000. Um, the DMB really isn't necessary, but I have seen some of the bigger commercial loans. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good indicator of, what, of how you run your business. So I've seen on the larger commercial loans, uh, yes. So getting back to the credit piece, you know, your personal credit is very important. There's this thing that lenders go by is the five C's of credit. So character. If I look at you, you come into the branch or the office, I'm gonna say, hey, you look pretty cool, but I don't know how cool you are. And I don't know if you're gonna pay back that note. So looking at your credit score kind of tells us who your character is and if you're willing to pay us back. Um, I'll also talk about online presence too, because um, so for some of the larger loans, 
I've seen our underwriters use LexisNexis and some of the underwriters have come back and turned down a loan because this person was involved in embezzlement years ago, or this person sued the Tampa of a, a city of Tampa for this reason. So it's also for a way for the bank to protect its risk on the loan, but also reputational risk. So I tell folks, Google yourself, Google yourself and Google your business, see what's out there. Uh, capacity, do you have enough cash on hand to repay the loan? Typically we'll look at your gross annual revenues. Uh, when you get into commercial banking, we have a thing that we use, it's called the um, debt cover service. And basically it's a ratio that'll tell you if you have enough money to cash flow. So one thing we don't want to do is we, want to, we don't want to give a loan to someone who cannot repay us and they end up going out of business. So having cash on hand is important. So we'll look at your deposits. Also capital, how much funds on hand? If you run into a problem, can you liquidate this fund? Can you liquidate, can we, can you liquidate, can you liquidate this cash to pay for that loan? And it could be collateral of some kind. Also the conditions. Um, Conditions change how we lend too. Uh, I think the Fed's gonna meet later on today. Interest rates may go up. That may make us look at different industries and consumers on how we lend. Also pandemic, we may change our lending process. Before the pandemic, there was a different land lending model. Going back to the recession. So there's different factors that can change how we lend, a lot of it could be based on not only the economy, but also the industry that we're in, that you're in. A collateral, these are, asset, these are assets that can be quickly turned into cash. So Kevin, I'll, I'll ask you, um, is there a certain industry that works well with you? Are there certain factors that are bigger successes than others? Uh, we do a lot. You mean the loans that I've been seeing a lot recently are, you mean, we see veterinarians, we see, like you mentioned, dog washing. Uh, there seems to be a, a rash of those. We've done car washes. We've done uh, pool services, uh, a little bit of everything. Again, the local store level, what I deal directly with in is, is usually loans under 100000 Anything above that would normally go to our next level. Uh, which we would still handle through the store, but we have a partner that steps in to coordinate the, the larger loans, say 250, 300, $400,000 loans. Um, but yeah, I would be your contact. If you chose TD Bank to work with, I would be your local contact. We would decide what amount of money you would need, what partners to involve, uh, how to get the application in place. Um, we've dealt, I uh, recently did a line of credit for a plumber. Um, what he needed access to was similar to what you mentioned before. He's having a problem buying uh, inventory and supplies. And what we were able to do was give him a line of credit where if he could go to his supplier and get basically a cash price for the pipe and, and the, the materials they needed, he could get a better price from them with paying with the bank's cash and then paying us back over time. So again, instead of going for every job and saying, I need, you know, 30 feet of PVC pipe, and I pay full retail for that, he could buy wholesale, get a better deal, make more profit, and then pay the bank back over time. So what he would do is he would pay this line of credit off every couple months, use it again, pay it off, use it again over and over and over again. In a case like that, if he needed a new vehicle, that wouldn't be something we would throw on his line of credit. That would be something that's better suited on a term loan. So we had that discussion when he sat down. He used his line of credit. He's since come back for a term loan for a couple of new trucks for his business. So that's the type of thing, if you get a really good banker, whether it's at TD Bank or, or any other bank out there, find yourself a good banker, explain what you're looking to do with your business. We wanna hear about your hopes and dreams because maybe not today, but six months, a year, two years down the road, we'll be there to help you with those, that financing. If you're working out of your house now and you want to buy a building down the road, bring that up now so we have that in our notes. 
will help you get your business in a, in a situation where you'll be ready for that commercial loan, commercial real estate loan down the road. We do a really good job at that. We, we get you started with your first loan, get it under your belt. When you outgrow your loan, we're there to help you with the next step in your business. When you take on maybe uh, additional investors and you grow, we're there for you then. When you wanna buy that first location, when you're tired of leasing and wanna own your building, we build on that. Similar to like we build on when you open your first checking account as a student. You start out as a student, you begin, begin working, graduate from school, you join the workforce. We're there to help you with your first mortgage, your first credit card, your first car loan or home equity. We do the same thing with businesses. We like to start out with a new business, work with them, and then help them grow throughout the process. All right, Kevin, thank you for sharing. Yeah, it's pretty interesting when you go county to county or location to location. I'm in Polk County and we're seeing a lot of folks who are in transportation. There's warehouses everywhere. I guess a lot of goods come into the port of Tampa. It's housed in Lakeland and it goes to Orlando. So we're seeing a lot of traction in uh, warehousing, transportation, trucking, the trades, subcontractors, and, and daycares. So we see the whole gamut. So we've probably seen it. So uh, yeah, check with us and I'll give you a, a, one of my best case scenarios. I was able to help a small business owner early on in his business. He used personal debt to start his business, $50,000. He did a term for $50,000 to pay down his line of credit. I mean, to pay down his personal debt. Then he got a line of credit and bought materials in bulk. Ended up growing his business, becoming a commercial client. He bought a house, he put money into retirement, and he adopted a kid. So for us as bankers, we see the long range, and that's, this is what makes us happy. Sometimes our days are tough, but when we see people grow their business and their family, that gives us a lot of joy. So please uh, see us. You know, we have resources online at tdbank.com. Uh, we have a small business resource center. We have templates. Uh, we have uh, calculators. We have vignettes, we have videos, we have articles. Any kind of question you may need is there. But we also love for you to come see us in person. So Kevin's in Sarasota, he's on Clark Road. And I don't know how we are on time, but we can open up for a Q and A. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to type those into the chat box. Will we still have some time? I don't see anything in the chat. Nothing in the chat. Again, I mean, just, just to say it one more time, you mean whether you choose TD Bank or any other bank around, make sure you're you're prepared when you go in, make sure you understand what's what's needed to apply for a loan. And just be honest with us. Just tell us what you're looking to do. We know the business. We know what's best suited to meet your needs. You just have to be able to tell us, hey, this is what I'm looking to do. This is the situation I'm in. This is how I'm looking to grow. Um, again, a good business plan. I mean, I spoke to, uh, it was actually a dog groomer who was looking to buy her first location. I asked her where she was looking to buy. She gave me the town name she wanted to, to buy in. I asked her, what are the real estate values look like in that town? She had no idea. I asked her, I said, well, what is the, uh, the insurance on a business type of, you know, that you're in? She didn't have any idea. I said, well, how about a utility bill? You know, is it, is it gonna be heavy on electric? Do you use a lot of equipment? She wasn't prepared for that. So we kind of dropped back a little bit, sat down and I helped her write just a very basic business plan. She started going out and looking at utilities, gas, electric, those type of things. And what she really needed to do was, was just build a better plan at that point. Um, we do a lot of work with the customers where you may not be ready today to apply. Uh, you may not know about these things that you need. You may have to come to back to us in a month or two. Um, we're also very good at, if it's a no, like Rob said, it may be a yes, it may be a maybe, it may be a no. 
if it's a no, I always like to end it with my customers. Well, it's a no today, but here's what we need before we apply again. You need to work on this, this, and this. You need to maybe pay down some of this, this debt that we're seeing. You maybe need to uh, uh, maybe get some more references. There's a lot of things we can do to get you approved. So again, a no today is not a no forever. You mean you have SCORE out there who's a really great partner. You mean they can help with business plans and things like that if you have no clue. Uh, our TD website has some really great tools on it out there on how to write a business plan. What is a personal financial statement? What information goes on there? So you're not alone in applying. Again, we're your partner. Your banker at your bank is your partner. Lean on us. We'll help you through the application. We're here to do loans. You mean it doesn't help us any if we don't do loans. We're not trying to discourage anybody. We want to just give you the very best chance of getting that loan approved. Hope that helps. I did have somebody ask about the contact information slide, and those will be emailed to everyone after um, the end of the presentation. Sorry, I kind of took over again. <laughs> I was having so many difficulties in the beginning. I got excited when it started working. Um, and I believe um, Kevin did just touch upon the, the bank doesn't necessarily write business plans for the business, but SCORE definitely does assist with that. So you can reach out to us right on the score.org backslash Minnesota, where you can request a mentor who would be happy to help you with starting a business plan. Um, other things that you will find on the score.org backslash Minnesota. Um, also, you could sign up for other webinars such as this. <clears throat> um, I would like to thank all of our attendees for attending today and learning more about what it takes to have access to capital. All right, gang. Thank you very much. Everyone be well. Thank you, everybody. Any questions, please reach out. Even if you don't decide to go with TD Bank, I'd, I'd love to help you. Thank you, everybody. And all attendees will receive a short survey at the end to let us know how we can improve and to also let us know about other topics that you may be interested in to see a web webinar about in the future. Thank you again for attending, and you will be receiving the slides and contact information in your email. Have a great day.